This video shows you why the Philadelphia 76ers are way better without Ben Simmons. Matisse Tybel became the first player ever to have blocked two Steph Curry three-point shots in the same game. Tyrese Maxey's shooting 37% from three-point range, but more importantly than that solid efficiency is that he's a threat from beyond the arc in the first place. Last year, with Simmons' inability to shoot, defenses would pack the paint on Joel Embiid and generally send more attention to Philadelphia's other shooters. The All-NBA defense, which is seemingly more overwhelming in his third season from Tybal, is making up for the impact that Simmons had on that end of the court. Andre Drummond nicely backing up Embiid, and Seth Curry being Philly's most consistent offensive weapon, has all contributed to Philly having won four of their last five games, including a win over the now 21-5 Golden State Warriors. Here's how Philadelphia is figuring out their new offense and having success, and stay tuned to see the potentially perfect trade partner for Ben Simmons. Before continuing, only 12.8% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. What the Sixers have struggled with in their recent playoff exits over the last few years is their spacing and perimeter shot making. With Simmons literally having the inability to throw a fish in the ocean, he would often awkwardly stand out on the perimeter or plant himself around the key. Either way, he was clogging the Sixers' driving lanes, and while he could produce all-star stats which contributed to Philadelphia winning a ton of games in the regular season, how Philly's offense was operating was never going to win the championship in the modern NBA. To win a title, you need your point guard shooting threes. All 30 GMs in basketball know that, which is the reason why GM Daryl Morey hasn't found a trade partner for Ben Simmons yet. More on that coming up. Tyrese Maxey has taken the reins as Philly's starting point guard in the midst of all the Simmons drama, and while Philly's only a decent 15-12, and 12, an MVP candidate last season in Joel Embiid has missed 10 games, and with a new floor general in Maxey, it was presumable that it would take some time for Philly's offense to find its flow. But the team's now won four of their last five games and own the number six seed in the East. whoop de doo What does it all mean, Basil? Well, maybe you'll be more impressed with this new Philly attack after you hear about their recent win over the steaming dubs. Entering last night's game, the Golden State Warriors were the number one seed in the West, and of course they're led by the early season favorite for 2022's MVP trophy, Stephen Curry. The dubs flew into the city of brotherly love, not only looking for a win, but a bit of history. The three-time NBA champion Steph entered the contest just 10 threes away from breaking Ray Allen's all-time three-point record. That storyline produced some buzz at Wells Fargo Center in South Philly, undoubtedly giving the game a playoff-type feel to it from the very start to finish. Evidently, right off the bat, the Sixers made it their main goal to not let Curry find a rhythm. However, Joel Embiid had a rough go of it in the first half, as he was just 1 for 8 from the field by the break, and at times looked uncomfortable. In the last game versus Utah, JoJo suffered an injury to his chest slash abdominal area that was noticeably bothering him a tad in the first 24 minutes of Saturday night's game. But he still got to the line eight times in the first half, which put a ton of pressure on Golden State down low. While the three-time All-NBA center seemed to be just grinding it out in the early going, the second half saw an alternative plot play out. The process dropped home 6 of 8 shots in quarters number 3 and 4 to finish a decent 7 of 16, with all 11 shots from the charity stripe converted. As the game progressed and Joel got used to the injury he was fighting through, the man started to find a few seams in the Warriors zone and executed clutch jump shots down the stretch. While the most popular player on the planet at the moment in Steph Curry has generated his fair share of MVP chance on the road this season, the MVP chants were pouring down for Embiid by the end of this one. When they're into it, the Sixers crowd can act as one of the NBA's best home court advantages. They get into their team when they don't perform, but it's also an incredibly passionate fan base that the franchise player Joel Embiid has more than embraced playing for throughout his six years in the NBA. In 21-22, the production Philly's been getting from their bench has been fairly subpar at times. Conversely, last night against the best team in the NBA, the players off Philly's pine saved the day and showed up when Sixer fans needed them most. The big penguin Andre Drummond was out there for a big portion of it. Embiid took a rest with 157 left in the third, Drummond entered the game, when Andre left with 6.22 left in the fourth, Philly turned an eight-point deficit into a three-point lead. The bench mob turned out an excellent performance, and Drummond was playing like the all-star version of himself, 
Andre displayed some high-level abilities on both ends against the highest level of opponent. Drummond was 4 of 5 from the fields and posted two steals and a dime. The Sixers buried Golden State when he was out there on the floor, as Drummond was a plus 18, only second in the game to another bench player, which was the backcourt creator Shake Milton, he was a plus 20. Back in 2009, there was a great New York Times article that was written about the at the time Rockets GM Daryl Morey acquiring Shane Battier, which was titled the No Stats All-Star. And versus the Golden State Warriors, Matisse Thybul was the No Stats All-Star. The Sixers wing was named to the All-Defensive Second Team in 2021, and he was the Naismith Defensive Player of the Year at the University of Washington. Thybul has continued his monster defense in 21-22, and last night, he made a point to tether himself to Curry's jersey like he was RDC World in this video. Man, bro, it's too early for this, bro. I'm not even trying to do nothing Coach, right now. Coach said just had to get you right here. Bro. You were making too many threes, no? Bro, bro man, I'm, you act like I'm going to shoot right now, bro. Like, chill. You right, you right. Oh, got you, man. Oh. probably took some notes on RDC, who posted that video a few days ago, as the two-time MVP Steph had one three-point shot blocked away seemingly from out of nowhere by Matisse, and in the second half, the Sixers defender got him again, this time in an ISO situation, swatting a shot that sent the ball flying. That left Steph with the rarest of stat lines, three three-pointers and three shots blocked. Curry's pursuit for the NBA three-point mark goes on, after the game, Steph said, I try to keep it out of my head and just play basketball. Meanwhile, Embiid said, That was not happening on my court. That was not happening in Philly. The Warriors fell to 21-5, dropping a half game back of the Phoenix Suns for the NBA lead. Curry was mostly kept under wraps over the 36 minutes played by Tybal, who made just his sixth start of the season strictly to smother the Warrior guard, and it worked out for Coach Doc Rivers. Curry was 6 of 20 from the floor, and the Warriors were held to under 100 points for just the second time this year. Tybal said afterward, Just having guys willing to let me take on that one-on-one -on -one matchup and play the rest of the team four-on-four -four allowed me to stay close to the body and not let Steph get anything easy. The Sixers held Curry to 18 points on 3 of 14 from three-point range, but Steph did move within six of matching Allen's record. And as I mentioned in the intro, Tybal was the first player in the history of Curry's 13-year career to block multiple three-point attempts on Steph in a single game. Warriors coach Steve Kerr said this after the game, I give Tybal credit. He's a rare combination of length and athleticism and brains. He did as good of a job on Steph as anybody I've seen in a long time. Both Sixers and Warriors fans rooted for Steph to set the mark in Philly, as fans held signs asking for the record, one read, 2,974 and beyond, and Steph was mobbed for autographs following warm-ups on his way back to the locker room. Curry obliged and signed jerseys and cards as one fan yelled, break the record tonight, baby. But it was never going to happen in Embiid's house. JoJo's lack of games played doesn't qualify him, but he would rank a solid number seven among all centers in defensive ratings so far this season. Embiid was solid at protecting the back end of Philly's defense versus the Warriors. Curry made only two threes in the first half and one in the fourth. Curry said, I understand the opposition is not going to want that to happen on their home floor. They defended accordingly. Kerr said, quote, The record's going to happen at some point soon. No reason to force anything. The Sixers were down throughout a majority of this game, even trailing by as many as 13 in the third quarter. But after that, they immediately rattled off a 9-0 run and would end up outscoring Golden State 32-20 in the fourth quarter. Tobias Harris chipped in with 16 points, Tyrese Maxey, Seth Curry, and Shake Milton combined for 34, and the Warriors shot just 12 of 48 from three-point range. And as a team, Golden State's ready for Curry to set the record and move on from the hype surrounding his chase of Allen's mark. Draymond Green said, quote, I think it's hanging over the world. We all want to see it. Regardless, the Sixers still took care of business in very impressive fashion. Not only is their defense incredible when locked in, but with the underappreciated snipe shooting Seth Curry getting more touches without Simmons and Maxi's ability to pop it from deep at the point guard spot, that makes the Sixers much different this year in my opinion. You have to check Embiid down low with at times two or three defenders rotating to the paint. After that, all you need is shooting to space it out for him, and that's the difference for Philly this year. When Embiid's on the floor, he has four other shooters surrounding him at all times, 
and even JoJo can let it fly from deep sometimes. You can't forget Andre Drummond is coming in and letting Joel Embiid rest a lot more this year, and with how injury-prone JoJo is, the Big Penguin can certainly help out the durability this season of one of the best centers in our game. But now, for maybe what you've stuck around for, the potential swap for Ben Simmons. Mike Greenberg and Jalen Rose of ESPN were discussing it before the Sixers game last night, but they suggested a one-for-one -one swap of Kyrie Irving for Ben Simmons. This would allow Kyrie to play in all home games in Pennsylvania, a state that doesn't mandate vaccines for players. The Nets don't have to worry about floor spacing too much with KD, Harden, and a top sniper like Patty Mills. I feel like Simmons would work really nicely setting screens and rolling next to James and Kevin. Maybe they would play Simmons like 15 to 25 minutes per game. For Philly, maybe they don't want to disturb the locker room too much, but let's not forget about what Kyrie Irving was doing before he hurt his ankle against Milwaukee. By the time the postseason comes around, vaccine mandates for fans and players may not be necessary by then. But obviously, the trade for Irving is a huge risk. But where should Ben Simmons be traded to and for who in return? Best answer gets next video shoutout. The top three commenters with the most shoutouts by the 25th of December are going to receive NBA merchandise in the holiday season, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Salim Shady, who says the most exciting aspect about Scotty is his ability to be a valuable piece in any moment of a game, whether it's being in the paint, being in late game situations, etc. Scotty will definitely be a special player. Thanks for every great take. Hope all of you watching have a great one. This was D Flow, and I'll see you next video.